Hey there, Sooner football fans. I am Parker Thune, and that is three-star offensive line commit Josh Isosa. You know him well by this point. He's from right up the road at Edmond Santa Fe High School on the north side of the OKC metro area, committed back in early August. And Josh, I think it's funny. <laughs> first, first distinct memory I have of you is you were down at the Rivals camp in Dallas in May, and I asked you, man, what offer would you really like to get? And you said Texas Tech, Texas Tech. You want yeah. to be a sand aggie, man. Yeah, that was a that was a while ago. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Obviously, a lot has transpired since then. Got the offer mm-hmm. from Oklahoma in July, committed in August. What what was the recruiting process like for you up until that OU offer? And how soon after that, after receiving that offer, did you know, okay, that's where I'm gonna be? Well, uh, the recruiting process was going, it was pretty well. It was, uh, a lot of schools are trying to get involved. You know, I probably could have, if I didn't commit the time I did, I probably would have been at, you know, maybe 20 or 25. But uh, things were going pretty good for me. And then, uh, you know, I hit up OU. I tried to talk to them and they, you know, they were, they were going for it. So, you know, I had to, I had to uh, do what I had to do. And I ended up going to OU. The day they offered me, I was actually at, uh, at work. I was at Pizza, you know, doing my thing. And Coach V based on me. And I walked outside. We talked for a little bit. He offered me, which was kind of crazy. And I knew right there, I'm like, yeah, this is where I'm going to go. And I uh, called back five days later and told him that uh, I'm committed. Well, there you go. Quick and easy. What what impressed you about Coach Bo as you got to know him throughout the ordeal? Um, he knows what he's doing, like, like really well, like behind the scenes, but stuff that y'all don't see, he's, he's a, a true O-line coach, put it that way. He, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. And, uh, he's, he's like a genius at it. You didn't play football for the longest time. Actually pretty new to the game, Mm -hmm. all things considered relative to your peers. So, uh, can you kind of walk through your athletic journey? up to the point where you started playing football. And at what point upon uh, kicking off your career on the gridiron, did you realize, okay, this can go somewhere for real? Um, most of my life I was playing basketball. You know, I really enjoyed it. Basketball might still be more enjoyable with me, but like, that's, that's a different you know, thing. But uh, I was playing basketball up until about uh, eighth and ninth grade and then uh, 10th grade. I'm like, I should try this football thing out because I got big over over quarantine. You know, I had to do something. And uh, there was a guy at my school named Jonathan Ashford. And I'm like, well, he's really successful at this. Maybe I can, you know, do the same thing. And, you know, he kind of led me down the, the path I needed to go. And uh, and I knew I could end up where, I, uh, where I'm at today. Now, as far as your new development as an offensive lineman over the last couple of years, uh, what have you, I guess, what's been the toughest part of learning the game of football in a technical sense? Obviously, you were familiar with it before you started playing, but as far as learning all the techniques of being an offensive lineman, what all goes into it that maybe the average person isn't entirely cognizant of? Um, it might sound uh, weird, but there's a lot of like math with like angles and you know, things like that like where you're stepping in, like how spaced out you want to be and like where uh, the zones are or you want to go. And that's kind of what took me the longest to figure out is like how to get to my zone fast and uh, at the best angle to make the block I need to make. And once I figured that out, things started going pretty well. Now, good group of offensive linemen here for you guys in the 2024 class. Obviously, you're committed. You guys have Isaiah Autry from the state of Mississippi already pledged uh, you have daniel akankumi from across the pond in london and then bj brooks from california so bill Bedenbo mm-hmm. has kind of pulled guys from all over to accumulate an offensive line hall here in the 2024 cycle obviously uh, the hope the expectation is that eddie pierre louis ends up committing to oklahoma this coming friday which would be edition number five but what in getting to know those guys to this point, what do you like about the group that y'all have assembled on the offensive line in the 2024 cycle? 
Um, I think we're a pretty good group. I think all of us had the chance to play him pretty early on, especially with the circumstances that, you know, happened the past couple of days. But uh, we're really genuine guys. You know, we talk to each other all the time. And uh, I think we're we're an elite group that can make things happen. What is Coach Biedenboe's vision for you? He wants you at tackle. He wants you at guard. Is that kind of contingent upon what happens with your physical development once you get there? What 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 has he kind of sold you on as far as where you fit at OU? Uh, tackle is kind of a, a dream now, you know. But uh, we've talked about we've talked about uh, center recently. There you go. And uh, I'm really excited for that because I I haven't played center in high school, but. Uh, I feel like I have what it takes, and I think I can play early on if I go, I go ahead and uh, start snapping and play something. You ever snapped before? Uh, not in the game, but like you know, outside of the game, I'm pretty decent at it. Yeah. So, you've got experience working at multiple positions. How does your footwork and kind of your mental approach change when you're playing inside versus when you're playing outside? Uh. Outside, you kind of have to think of, like, there's more space uh, between you, the guy, and your QB. So, like, you have to um, be more methodical what you're doing. Inside, you're kind of uh, – everyone's kind of closed down with each other. So, you can play – you can play more physical and, like, more f- more free, I think, if you're playing inside. But uh, outside, you kind of have to, you know, me- measure direction and, you know – almost like mind game, the guy in front of you. You know what I'm saying? There you go. So what – have you gotten the chance to kind of dive into the film with Coach Biedenboe and kind of see what his mind for the game looks like? Uh, a little bit on my official when I went up. So what What kind of stood out about the way that he sees the game and evaluates the offensive line as a whole? Um. Uh, He's he's really smart about it, which is uh you know what I expected. But uh, when I went up there, we went uh we went to his office, watched a little film, and uh, and he was he wasn't like done evaluating it yet. So like as we're watching it, he was like picking up mistakes and picking up what things like things people could do better. Like as we we're talking, writing down, and I, like that kind of stood out to me that you know we were supposed to be in a a little like film conversation but he was he was actively like trying to improve his guys while we was doing that you know what i'm saying so oklahoma obviously in this 2024 cycle has a pwo that everybody is juiced about from right up the road at heritage hall and that's andy bass however there is another nationally ranked pwo that comes from your same school in bergen kaiser uh, kind of seeing mm-hmm. firsthand the type of player that Bergen is. What is OU getting in him? What kind of insight can you lend there? Uh, he's they're getting a worker and a a smart a smart physical guy. And uh, in my opinion, I think he should be on scholarship. I don't I don't know what's going on, but I think he should be a scholarship guy. There he has the know. he has the ability to to do some work and uh, really get uh, play some major time for OU. You gonna be on campus in January or in June? Uh, in January. Okay, so getting a jump start. What are kind of your goals? Obviously, the goal for everybody is to get on the field and play as a freshman, right? But in, being a little bit more specific than that, what do you hope to accomplish as a freshman at Oklahoma? And what are kind of some benchmarks that you've established for yourself? Obviously, I want to, you know, get stronger. You know, defart like, and then I tone my body a little bit, make me look, you know, look a little better feel a little better on that. I also want to uh, get some playing time. Like with the with the way I see things right now, I definitely think I can end up playing a little bit this year. And that's like the the main thing for me. You become acquainted with the uh, Jerry Schmidt workout routine yet? Not yet, but I heard it's it's uh game changing, put it that way. Haven't been around campus this fall as much as you have. What is impressive to you about the growth that you've seen within the program in terms of what's going on behind the scenes as well as the output on the field, right? Winning 10 games this year after a six and seven year in 2022. What's been impressive 
about the growth from a firsthand perspective that you see taking root right now at Oklahoma? Uh, I see that Coach V has the he has the team more than he uh, ever has before. It's a little weird to say that after you know the news that people have seen recently, but guys are are locked in. They're they're playing for each other. They're uh, you know, they're really mended together. Put it that way, and they're um, they're making strong improvements. And I think uh, we're definitely ready for the SEC next year. Boom. There you go. Josh Isosa, three-star offensive line commit from Edmond Santa Fe High School, right up north of OKC. Josh, man, always appreciate your time. Great to catch up with you. We'll talk again soon. Thanks so much. Thank you.